Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 14 of Night Call. So we're back at night 4 and I just restarted the game so the only person we could drive changed, at least as far as I can remember. So I wonder what happens when we drive her, if we really get to drive her if, or if something happens along the way. Because as far as I can remember, around this time we should have also have like a vision from ourselves who remembers who killed us. Because I was thinking about it and I'm still a little clueless on who like our prime suspect could be. Okay, yeah. I hope that's us. <laughs> You're driving along when a strange burn smell suddenly fills the cab. You look around, sniff. Is it coming from outside? Wait a second, that was happening when the future girl. Let's just park. As soon as you see a free spot, you pull over and park. You freeze. Something. Or someone is in your taxi. A woman's voice resonates around the cab. Oh, okay, it's the time traveler. Okay, so we already know that. We have already heard that. So I wonder, since we drove Annabelle earlier now if she will come back during our investigation her reporting has to reveal the existence of underground laboratories she absolutely must go to syria it's essential in delaying the creation of the virus other teams are currently she suddenly realizes she's just appeared in your taxi fuck we can't seem to stay on target with the timeline we determined she leans toward you I have another name on my list. Pauline. Pauline Huarot? You've never heard of her. I don't have much information on her from this time period, but she was supposed to go meet her future wife in Canada. Pauline is a... Her eyes tear up. She's central to our plan. Your plan? We don't have as much of an impact on the past as we'd like, but we can make a very slight impact. It's like a hand-woven rug. You have to go line by line, very patiently. Pauline and the others I mentioned have a role to play. Her voice fades. And so do you. I do? Yes. Even... Driver... Her voice starts to break up. There is a problem. Shit, our connection is falling apart. An unbearable whistling noise starts coming from the radio when you turn around. Shit, what the hell was that? The burnt smell slowly fades and you start driving again. Okay, so now this was a different... They stated a different second person. <gasps> oh, then there's Ade. And Shori again up there. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go with Ade because I hope that she'll have a vision about our... Murder her. Because like I said, I'm a little bit clueless and our memory of the killer with the wrinkled hands was like a really good clue. So I hope that it, that we have this here too in this case. But I think I'm going to drive Ade also because she seems to be connected to my past somehow. Although I don't really, I can't. Is this game stuck again? Oh, I hope it, I hope I see Ade again. And Ade is gone. Great. Well, who's she? I don't know. I've never seen her before, so let's go. That bugs me a little bit. I hope that I just didn't re want to restart again. Sylvie and Sylvain Patrou, we're going Le Pré Saint-Gervais, right behind La Villette. Okay, well, they pay nice. Why not? People exiting a downtown theater. Two passengers climb into your cab. Oh, it's a mother and her son. They look a lot alike. No doubt the mother and son. Their faces have the same sweet expression. Their eyes, too. They say hello to you. The mother gives you an address and you start the cab. You look into the rearview mirror. Something seems to be bothering them. Let's break the ice, then. What did you see? She looks at her son, wondering if she would an if she should answer. An opera, a very beautiful opera, my son's favorite. 
He doesn't dare look up. He's already a huge opera fan at his age. She gives you a faint smile as if to say conversation over. Well, he doesn't look very fascinated. You say nothing and focus on the road. It's not very late. There are still a lot of cars out. Traffic is slow. A few minutes later, she starts speaking to her son, her voice quiet, apologetic. I've been thinking about what you said and I want you to know I love you. I didn't know what to say in there. I was surprised. I'd suspected it, but... We can talk about it later, if you want. Do you want to talk to your father? A pause. He casts a glance into the rearview mirror, but you're concentrating on the road. Uh, no, not right away. Another pause. I'm worried he'll take it badly. She jumps in almost immediately. I didn't take it badly, you know. I know, mom, I know. She glances at you. Shall we just smile or will she be mad that we just listened in? No, let's just smile. As if you had given her the go ahead, the mother nods. You know, I'm proud of you, really. He sighs. Mom, there's nothing to be proud of. Yes, there is. I mean, I... I'm proud of you. I'm sure you're going to turn out to be a beautiful person. He sighs again. Mom, what are you talking about? That makes no sense. Being... being... He practically spits out the word. Gay doesn't make you a nice person. It doesn't make you beautiful or intelligent or anything at all. But it does make you honest. No, not even that. It has nothing to do with honesty. It's like saying being blonde means you're honest. You know, that's not what I meant. I'm sorry you don't want to understand me. I'm just trying to tell you I'm happy that you... She nods her head and starts over. I only hope you don't regret talking to me about it. He rolls his eyes, he's getting impatient. Of course I don't, why would I regret it? I'm just a little nervous, that's all. I think I didn't know what to expect. So it's kind of interesting because I wonder how old Sylvain is. From this angle, he looks like a child. But when he turns his head, he looks like a teenager. So I'm not really sure how old he is. Is that why you don't want to talk to your father about it? I don't want to talk to dad because he isn't going to understand. I wanted him to come to the opera tonight. He preferred to stay home. She lets out a short laugh. It's not really his cup of tea, you know. He's not at all amused. Well, I would have liked him to come anyhow. He never makes an effort for me or for you for that matter. That's enough. I've already told you, you are too hard on your father. The teenager withdraws. He works hard. He doesn't have a lot of free time. He spends all of his free time playing tennis. He needs to relax. His work is very stressful. He's short-tempered and preoccupied, but he doesn't mean any harm. A pause. He has no problem with homosexuals, you know. The teenager can't help saying through clenched teeth. I would hope so. The mother is reluctant to talk. The glistening in her eyes is hard to make out. Sometimes you forget we aren't from the same generation. We grew up in another era. Your father grew up in a house... He finishes the sentences for her. I know, without a TV, without a radio, and without internet, right. It's a conversation they've had before, both passengers sigh. The cab is nearing their address. I can talk to him if you want. No, absolutely not. I'll talk to him myself when I feel like talking to him. Fine, but I just want you to know I'm there for you if you need me. I know. She stares at him for a second or two without speaking. Come on, cut it out. It's embarrassing. I'm happy, that's all. I want to remember tonight. 
I saw you during the opera. You never even looked at the stage. Of course I didn't. You seemed so happy. I was relieved. I know it's going to make you mad, but I'm so proud of you. The adolescent sighs. You pull up to a modern building. The teenager gets out immediately. The mother pays for the ride and says softly, Sorry, it was a little complicated tonight. <clears throat> you have every reason to be proud, no problem, or say nothing. Well, you know, let's say the nice thing. Thank you. The truth is, I didn't know how to react. I was worried I'd say something stupid, hurt his feelings. He's still a child. She stops short. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. The teenager knocks on the door. Are you coming or what? She glances over at you, then adds quietly. Thank you. The mother gets out of the cab and turn. Her son is waiting for her by the door to the building. I think you have the keys, right? Uh, just a minute, hold on. They disappear into the lobby. You drive away. Ah, That was a sweet story. Oh, and we're close to our next point of interest. No, I don't want to drive you crazy lady. I just... Is that the, the daughter again? Uh, what was her name? Esmeralda? Yes, I want to go there. Come on, don't tell me it's stuck again. Really? We can go there, but not there? So is this another billabong thing? Okay, I'm gonna refuse her. I just wanna go there. Why can't I go there? Ah, Are you kidding me? Do we know him? He looks familiar, but I don't know how. And why can't we go to this point of interest? Ah. Oh! That's the guy who never talks to us. Okay, he pays alright. You double park and wait for your next passenger to slide into the back seat. He looks at you like he appreciates you in your taxi. He gives you his address, so he doesn't like being talked to. You start driving. A few words are exchanged, the weather, taxes, traffic. Then you can tell it's coming, the inevitable conversation about the killer. Oh, that's also nice. Some bits of information, rumors, things overheard. You make a mental note of what you've heard. Who knows, it might come in handy. Passenger doesn't make a sound for the next few minutes of the trip. It doesn't bother you, you have enough on your mind. Your investigation plus PC plus the Angel of Death. You can't help but sigh when you think about that ridiculous name. <laughs> You're overcome with a craving to smoke. You nod slowly and glance at your passenger. Calm and still, he seems far away. So, the last time he didn't want to talk to us and he was. And he looked disappointed when we talked to him, so I'm just gonna say nothing. Silence becomes heavy, all of a sudden you feel a strange sense of camaraderie with your passenger. You look at him quickly in the rearview mirror. He doesn't look familiar at all, and yet it's like you know him. A second later, an outside light shines on his face at a weird angle. It looks like he's smiling. A few seconds later, you drive down the street. He straightens up a bit. You park in front of the number he gave you. He pays his fare without a word. The door opens slowly and he smiles at you. You can tell it comes from the bottom of his heart despite how uptight he is. You're really a swell guy. Oh, again? I thought that maybe he would talk on his own if we didn't talk to him. You weren't expecting that. By the time you collect your thoughts, your passenger is already far away. He disappears into a building. A moment goes by before you turn the key in the ignition. So I just chose to say nothing to him, although I had the chance. And I hoped that he would, like, open up then on his own, but he didn't. So, that sucks. Who's next? So, can I go there now? No, why can't I go there? Hmm. Okay, so who are we going to drive next? Her? We don't know. And him? We don't know either. Well then, let's go to him. I missed the last train. I'm going to Sun Wen. 
Okay, he also pays good. You pull up to the sidewalk to pick up the passenger who ordered a cab. Oh no, dramatic music starts playing. I wonder what this story is gonna be. You can just make him out, surrounded by five or six cops and all too familiar scene. Every so often the low ominous tones of an officer's voice makes it to your ear. The circle of cops breaks up, you see your passenger, he heads over to the cab and gets in. He slams the door and lets rip. Motherfucking cops. He gives you his address and you start the car. The passenger stares out the window and the passing road as if to calm himself. You take a quick look in a rearview mirror. Everything alright? Uh, yeah, sure. They're afraid to lay a finger on us nowadays, don't want to get blown up. An ironic half-smile appears on his face, then immediately disappears. He knows a bad joke when he hears one. What a fucking pain in the ass. Can't go out without getting screwed by each and every one of those son of a bitches. If you're not wearing a goddamn beret, if you happen to be wearing sweatpants, then yeah, right, you're a fucking hood. He smirks wryly, then raises his voice an octave. Your papers, please. He sighs, his voice back to normal. Yeah, sure. Shove your aunt's cock up your friggin' ass, buddy. <laughs> huh. Always the same old thing, isn't it? I don't know, I just wanna say nothing. I w maybe he tells us more of his story then. Your passenger's looking out the window. The road passes by. There's very little traffic at this time of night. Only a few delivery trucks and worn-out drivers. The passenger catches your eye in the rearview mirror and reluctantly removes something from his jacket pocket. The shape, it looks like a book, a paperback, with a white cover. What are you reading? The passenger seems surprised by the question, or perhaps by your familiar tone. He hesitates for a moment or two, then answers. The Count of Monte Cristo. Alexandre Dumas. All of a sudden, the passenger seems terribly young to you, like a naughty child caught red-handed. I read it once, a long time ago. He steadies his gaze on you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The main guy, you know, he's really pissed off. He catches your eye in the rearview mirror. He realizes he's not all worked up anymore. It's my, uh, girlfriend who gave it to me. She likes Dumas? Yeah, I think so. She's into all that historical stuff. <laughs> what? What is it? To me, it was a real drag at first, but... He lets out a sigh. I think this was unintentionally put in as a thought. I don't know. She forced me a little and then, then I realized that Monte Cristo, he's one of us. I mean, his story, it's a lot like what goes on today. But I introduced her to new stuff too. There are these texts, you know, rap lyrics that she really likes. You should see her putting on a show and all, but the truth is she actually likes it. It's the same thing with reading, right? I mean, it had to be properly explained to me. I had to want to try it. That was it, man. I was on my way. He looks down. A short time later, you pull up at the address given by your fare. It's a low, rather unattractive building. The passenger passes you the money for the ride. I have to go. Punch in early tomorrow. He pauses, eyeing the time on the radio's LCD display. Or later on, I should say. A moment later, he vanishes into the night. Oh, that was a nice story. So, who's next? Wait, is that? I don't. I don't remember her name. Is that the the woman that we drove to the to the airport to pick up her future husband? I want to see. If we refuse, we only lose a little time and maybe we meet someone new. A policewoman crosses the street and freezes. She shines her flashlight at you, then continues. Oh, that's someone new. Oh well, then let's accept it. I mean, she had a similar hair to her, so... The passenger who enters your cab seems familiar to you. She gives you her address and you start to drive. 
You glance back at her from time to time, trying to remember where you've seen her before. It's no use. Suddenly she gives a little pout, clearly annoyed by your insistent gaze. Sorry, your face seems familiar to me. She breathes an audible sigh. Could be. She pauses deliberately. I'm in porn. Oh no. <laughs> That's who she is, an actress. A former actress. You'd seen her in a couple of movies a few years ago. Oh well, I... <laughs> okay. That's probably why you recognize my face. Your mouth suddenly goes dry. Her eyes and voice show no sign of emotion whatsoever. She might as well have said she, she were a teacher or a dentist. Oh well, what is the proper answer to this? I definitely wouldn't go with do you like it? Oh, you're not just an actress? That's unusual. Uh oh. Hmm, I'm a little bit torn between you're not just an actress, although that sounds a little bit, I don't know. I'm just gonna go with that's unusual. You're right, it is. A smile tucks at the corner of her mouth. But... It's my job. I'm proud of what I do, actually. Though I'd be lying if I said it was always easy, but given the state of the industry nowadays... And even then, sometimes it's... An illuminated shop window catches her eye, she stops for a moment. Especially with the parents at my son's school, some of the fathers recognize me. Oh well, that must be a hassle. That must be so strange. She's watching you closely. Some of the mothers too, for that matter. Hmm. She smiles. Usually I can see they're either amused or ashamed, which is too bad either way. What do you mean? Or I can imagine. What do you mean? Well, everyone loves porn. Even if you say you don't, the idea of porn, it's natural, actually. Well, personally, I think it's natural. But when you talk about it out loud, it gets people all worked up. Her eyes widen. Just admitting you watch it is an actual feat. These days, for example, the 25 to 35 year old crowd is really into bisexual threesomes. Two girls and a guy, two guys and a girl. But who'd be willing to admit they like it? That they watch it? That it turns them on? She answers with a shrug. She looks away, your sense she's being utterly honest. Afterwards, you know, she goes on with a faint smile. But that's no excuse for your lack of tact. What? The profession has changed a lot since then, and I want to bring about even more changes. She leans forward slightly. Before, actresses could count on working for a dozen years or so, 15 if they started young. They'd have a moment in the spotlight and then it was over. The next career step was merely a slow decline. But nowadays, actresses have power, thanks to the media, to streaming and Twitter. She catches her breath. You can sense she's full of energy, electrified by the discussion. I started my own production company and we make porn. She loves talking about it, you can see it in her face. Gender positive porn, committed, respectful, some call it feminist, but I'm not sure that's how I'd describe it. Her voice is calm, a gleam of passion lights up her eyes. We shoot with pros, we are respectful of our bodies and personalities, our actresses and actors are well paid, they receive residual earnings. It's brand new, a first, it's fresh and it works. Zero tolerance when it comes to those dubious types, to wandering hands, to any assaults on the well-being of our actors and actresses. Respect, diversity, creativity. She lets out a sigh. I spend a lot of money defending our profession, going after sites, illegally broadcasting our videos, making sure pirates are punished. Pirates? Well, I guess I know what she means with pirates. Like... She leans forward. But by the way, do you... do you like that kind of porn? Oh no, please, I don't want to give an answer to that. I'm just asking because I'm curious about what people like to watch. It's, it's not really my thing. It's okay to talk about it, you know? Uh, I'd rather not talk about this. Look, I don't really don't want to talk about it. It's not all that interesting to me. 
She opens her mouth to say something and then stops. Instead, she gives a sarcastic sigh. She's heard that excuse a thousand times. She lapses into silence. The ride continues in silence, your passenger is suddenly engrossed by the streets outside. You sense the rest of this ride will continue like this. You don't mind, sometimes silence feels good. You've made your way across Paris before you know it. You smile to yourself, what's the point of autonomous cars when you just have to think of something else to make yours drive by itself? Before long you arrive at the address your passenger had given you. You have trouble parking, none of the streetlights are working, there is nothing stranger than an unlit Parisian street in the middle of the night. Your client gives a light, slight cough behind you. You wouldn't mind staying here until I'm in the building? They're doing work, the lights aren't working. She doesn't even finish her sentence. No problem. Thanks, I, I have to say I've been feeling a little insecure lately. All of her energy suddenly seems to have vanished. She hesitates a moment as is, as if as if she can feel your connection with the killer before speaking. I knew one of the victims of the serial killer. <gasps> Ooh, tell me more. Natalie, I knew her pretty well, in fact. We'd work together and sometimes she babysat my son. You know, she was a great girl. It was... She starts talking about her friend. Who she was, who she had been seeing, how she had changed just before she died. You make a mental note of the new information. I'll stay here until you're in the building, okay? Thank you. She hands you the fare and exits the cab slowly, crossing the street in total darkness to the door of her building. You remember that night. The pain, the stab of the knife in your side. If only you had turned your head, you would have seen your assailant's face. Maybe they would have killed you that night. Maybe your attacker would have already spotted you in your cab. Your passenger waves to you as the building door closes. You wave back. Fear spreads slowly through your body. You breathe in slowly and drive away. Well, that turned out to be interesting in the end. So this is like the... This is the womanizer guy, I think. No, 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 no. He's the drunk father. The passenger getting into your taxi is drunk. He all but trips as he's getting into the backseat, leaving a piece of his jacket stuck in the door as he slams it ten times too hard. Oh! The whole street must have heard it. We can now turn him down on making up a lie with his wife so he won't think we're a bad person afterwards. Ha. Huh. Um, so, no, I'm not gonna accept this. I'm not gonna make up a lie to you, with you. Hmm, refuse. Sorry, but no. I'm a taxi driver, not a screenwriter. Oh, your passenger looks at you out of the corner of his eye, rather surprised. I just need to find some sort of alibi. You can see I'm too toasted to do it on my own. I just need an evening to myself, a calm evening. He nods. An evening without the baby, I mean. So you gotta help me. No, I'm not gonna help you. This explanation is even worse. You just want an evening without your child. Your wife probably wants that too. It's out of the question. You're not going to lie to your wife. Tell her the truth. It will be better for everyone. He looks up and sighs. He looks like an angry child. You suck. I've known other drivers that are much nicer. Oh, shut up. His head wobbles and he looks like he's about to fall asleep. Give him a lecture and make fun of him. Let's give him a lecture. You only want to lie to your wife so you can escape your responsibilities. You have a baby and you'd rather go out drinking? You throw him a nasty look in a rearview mirror. Time to face the music. A moment of silence, he lowers his eyes. He shoots you a dirty look from behind. You are really... His eyes start to flutter, he doesn't finish his sentence. His head slowly slides towards the door and hits the window. The rest of the ride is punctuated by your passenger's snores. You finally pull up in front of his building, you shake his leg. We're here. He wakes with a start. An asshole. Thanks. You sigh. He hands you his wallet and falls back on his seat. You take the wallet. <laughs> wow, take more money? No, I'm taking the exact fare. 
You put the wallet back in his coat pocket and help him get out of the car. You stagger with your passenger up to the front entrance of his building. He pulls his keys out, opens the door, and puts his hand up. I'll take it from here. Thanks, man. He disappears into the lobby. Just before the door closes, you hear him trip. So, did we take some tips too, or... You get back in your car and drive off. Oh wow, we did even tip us. <laughs> nice. Very well. Okay, this is the womanizer guy. <gasps> that's our... That's, that's, that's the suspect. That's our cult lady. Well, then let's go, I'd say. Why is everyone paying so well in this chapter? Oh, it's beautiful. The woman getting into the cab is a regular and a suspect, though you haven't seen her for a while. Oh, we know her from before, too. She always makes you feel uncomfortable. She claims to be... Cherie, I'm thirsty. A vampire. <laughs> what? Where to? Uh, so thirsty. I have no idea what's going on tonight. Oh, I'm absolutely parched. And I'm sick of going to the Belvedere again and again. What a bore. Of course, I love the place. The decor reminds me of the old plantation, but it's become so routine. And when a routine sets in, you're a goner. You give her a quick look. No, Cherie, not literally. Don't look at me that way. The thing is, I'm looking for something fresh, full of life. To drain it from them. To kill them. With a good strong heart, nice and strong. A little gay guy who works in advertising, a vegan addicted to MDMA. Well, you have a very particular taste, I'll tell you that. Do you know where I can find one? A chill runs down your spine. What if you couldn't find the right kind of bar? Um... Think about places. The only thing you can think of is card or a nightclub in San Wen you've known about for years. Maybe not what she's looking for, but definitely a young crowd and lots of atmosphere. Let's mention that. Uh, no place just north of Paris called Carter. Just north of Paris? I don't mind the suburbs. Why not? It might be interesting. I never go to that part of town ever. Not my usual stomping grounds. My kinfolk in the area are extremely aggressive. But why not? Carter it is. You start the cab, the scenery starts to unfold. The passenger seems to have lost interest in you. It's the second or third time you've picked her up. She's told you her life story every time. Could she really be a vampire? You'd rather not ask. You hear a slight cough. How long have we known each other now? A few months, I guess. I take more cabs in the summer, that's for sure. I have to stay more on my toes. A knowing wink. I used to have a driver. Suddenly her head seems somewhere else. What happened to him? Did he die? She smiles. Something awful. Retirement. A burst of lather. There is a particular quality to her voice as if someone else in the car were laughing alongside her. Anyhow, I can't afford a driver anymore. Human life is so pricey these days, Cherie. Back when my mother was a slave, she was worth nothing or near about so. Today, everyone is worth something. We're all equal. She waves a hand before her face and utters something in icy tones. Manti! What? A few moments go by, the passenger watches you in silence and diverts her gaze as if you were an animal. Does it bother you having me as a passenger? No, why do you ask? Because of who I am. Who are you? She smiles. You know very well who I am, Cherie. She waves a hand. I won't bother you with that anymore. You already refused my offer twice. I won't insist. It takes more courage than you think. A faraway look comes over her. Though nowadays, people's lives are far too comfortable to make any radical changes. 
the imagination of a Parisian begins and ends with starting over in the country among the wildlife and the livestock. There is a hint of sadness in her voice. What a pity. We could have had such a good time together, Cherie. Oh well, I hope you didn't already have a good time with me when you stabbed me in the sides. There's no more talk until you pull up to Carter. You can immediately tell your passengers disappointed. She hands you the fare and heaves a sigh. Provincial club, just outside of Paris. If only I had known. She waves a hand as if to silence you. But it's not your fault, Cherie. I know you try your best. Such is the way of the world. She sighs. A world that's changing all too quickly. We'll soon be old hat left on the sidelines. She shrugs with a glance at her polished nails, give you a smile and pace for the ride. But I won't let it get me down. Wish them luck. With a wing, she walks over to the nondescript club. It looks pretty seedy. Shady characters are loitering in the par parking lot. Oh no, tomorrow she'll be turning up dead. Maybe we were the killer all along, driving people to bad nightclubs. Your customer's unusual appearance gets a lot from some of the youths. She doesn't let it deter her, though. She steps resolutely through the door of Carter. Okay, it's time to go home. Okay, so Pauline. We need to find someone named Pauline. Sonny still thinks we're a swell guy. That was the day. I'm interested now in what clues we get. But we are going to do that in the next episode. So, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.